Hi, welcome to Claire's Cat, and we're doing Grade 11 Cat 2.3 Online Lifestyle today. So let's talk about fixed internet access. Your options are ADSL or fiber, although ADSL is mostly going out of um, service and fiber is taking over. The limitations of fixed internet is there's a lack of portability, it can be expensive and you need the coverage. Um, fiber to the home is FTTH and fiber to the business is FTTB. WiMAX is also starting to be more widespread. It stands for worldwide interoperability for microwave access. It's an upgrade on Wi-Fi. It's more secure. There's broadband access and it's a viable option, option where fiber is not yet available. Now, when you don't want to be limited to a fixed location, you will use mobile internet access. Um, either you have Wi-Fi or a hotspot. And with Wi-Fi, it uses radio waves to send data. And then it allows the devices to connect to the internet via router or they can communicate with one another uh, wirelessly. With a hotspot, um, it's a place where a Wi-Fi network has been created and the area in which the devices can connect is quite small. 3G and 4G, that's referred as to as LTE. This uses the infrastructure of cellular networks all depends on cell phone operators and it gives you high speed internet access for your smartphone and for computers but you need to have the cellular connection now with browsers and email clients on mobile devices works a little bit different than on a computer with emailing there are a few restrictions to do with formatting messages. It's not as powerful as on a computer, but you can push the emails from your account to the device and you can set your device to check for emails at regular intervals. Um, with regards to the internet, the gra graphics on the tables may not always display correctly on your mobile device because it needs more space. And the pages that depend on pop-up windows for data entry also may not work correctly. So let's talk about digital communications. Social networking sites have many advantages. They're easy to use, very cost effective. Usually don't pay anything to use them. You can send and receive messages. You can update your status. And it's not bound by geographical or cultural differences. Can also be used as a marketing tool. The disadvantages is there's a risk of identity theft, fraud, online stalking, and so on. You can put any false information you like on your profile and people can pick it up and believe it. And people often create a fake life that looks perfect on the outside, but it's not the reality of what they're actually living. It can also cause a loss in productivity. People get very distracted through it. And there's also a problem that there's a huge amount of data and information on the internet, but it's not always of a very high quality. And there are many sites that analyze your posts and then target certain advertising to you. So best practices for social networking is do protect your privacy, your settings, and make sure you are protected. Make sure people are restricted to access your profile. Be careful how you give out your information and don't just befriend anybody. Don't be 
damaging or insulting or provocative in what you post. Restrict the time you spend on it. And yeah, those are all very important things. The next thing is VoIP, which stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. This is a technology that allows telephone calls to be made over LANs, WANs, and the internet. And you can talk to anyone else who also has a VoIP system anywhere, or who's just downloaded the software. So there's WhatsApp calling, FaceTime calling, Skype, and Zoom. So with VoIP, the advantage is it's much cheaper than normal landline or even cellular calling. The software is usually free. You can also transfer files using the same software. And you can make video conference calls where you can see each other as well as hear each other. The disadvantages are the call quality may be poor if you have a slow or a weak internet connection and it can use up a lot of your data cap, especially if you're using video. So the best practices are only use video when necessary, check your contact status, and make sure you have a decent headset and microphone. It will help you have better quality sound. And check the local time zones in the other country so you don't disturb people at the wrong times of day. Video conferencing is a little different to VoIP calling. This allows you to have two or more people to hold online conferences while they're in different places. And you use a computer network to transmit audio and video, and it feels like all the people are in the same room. So here's a good photo illustrating video conferencing. People at the back are on TVs. They're not really there. The advantages are that you can see the people you're communicating with. It's much cheaper than traveling. And then the disadvantages are you need a fast internet connection and it does use a lot of data or cap. Chat rooms are also another e-communication method. In the online environment, it allows people to meet and chat with, another, with each other, and it's usually people with common interests. It's in real time, and social networking sites are used for the traditional functions of chat rooms. So to use WhatsApp on your computer, you can actually put WhatsApp uh, web on. The advantages are that it is it works globally all over the world. There are many operating systems that it works on. But the disadvantages, you can't make sure that people are who they claim to be. Like uh, an old man could tell you he's a young man and put a photo there. And how ca can you know he really is who he says he is? And users can spend more time in chat rooms than in the real world, and they lose touch with the real world. There's also the problem of cyberbullying and identity theft and so on. Best practices in chat rooms. Don't give out personal information. Don't arrange to meet in person. Don't bully and don't get involved in flame wars. That means just big fights between people. Another interesting um, and useful um, aspect of e-communication is RSS feeds. This allows you to have updated content. For example, if there's a blog entry, that a blog site that you follow and that you enjoy, you can be notified whenever there's a new blog entry or whenever there's a news headline or different topics that interest you in certain websites. So the advantages are all your news is in one place and it saves time. It avoids spam. 
and the disadvantages are you can subscribe to too many RSS fields and feeds and be overloaded. Sometimes the graphics and photos are not included as well. Best practices use a dedicated RSS reader program. It's easier to manage and read your feeds. Only subscribe to feeds that you are sure you will read. And then file transfer protocol. This is a protocol used for fast, easy transfer of files between remote computers that have an internet connection. Although Google Drive and OneDrive and Dropbox have actually taken over this function because when we want to transfer files, we usually put them in the cloud and then the other person can retrieve them from, this, from the same drive. Internet banking is used widely. You can view your account balances, pay bills, transfer money, order credit cards, buy prepaid data and airtime. The advantages, it's very convenient anywhere, anytime. Transactions are normally faster and they cost less. It's safer. You don't have to carry cash. And then shopping and reservations, when you do online shopping, you have to register on a certain website with a username and password. You browse and then choose your goods. Then you go to virtual checkout and you can add and remove articles at any time before you pay. And then at the end, you pay with your credit card or EFT or other means. You can also use it to book for movies or car hire or airline tickets and so on. The advantages, very convenient. You can do it 24 seven in the comfort of your home. You can compare prices more easily and it can be cheaper. And businesses can reduce overhead costs because they do not need a shop in which to store all of their goods. They, they do not have to pay rent and that makes it much cheaper to operate a business. They don't need huge quantities of stock as well. Now, the disadvantages, it's actually better to see the goods physically. Sometimes what you order looks very beautiful online and when you get it, it doesn't fit you at all. Delivery costs and import, ta import taxes can be expensive, especially if the article comes from overseas. And then there are all the important ways of how to protect yourself online. Cyberbullying and cyberstalking. Cyberbullying is when somebody spreads rumors or gossip or they generally bully another person using digital communication methods. And cyberstalking is when somebody, an individual is obsessed with somebody and they use digital technologies to track the victim. Malware and security software are also a big problem. Malware is any software written with negative intentions. So someone trying to harm you through affecting your computer with something that makes it not work properly. There's a lot of destructive software like viruses, a lot of annoying software, for example, adware. And these can be detected in two ways. A virus will have a trace, like a virus definition or a signature. And they, you could have suspicious actions going on on your computer. So unknown software trying to make changes to settings, for example. So if you have antivirus or anti-spyware software, it will be effective as long as you um, keep your database of signatures complete. You have to go online every day and make sure it downloads the new signatures and your database must be up to date on your computer. You need to use it frequently. 
and firewall software can also help. This controls which programs on your computer can access the internet. It's like a door between you and the internet and it checks everything going through that door. And Windows provides a basic firewall facility that you should switch on and use. So how do banks protect their clients? They give you an access code and a PIN. There are on-screen keypads, and those elim eliminate the dangers of key loggers. Key loggers detect what keys you are pressing on your keyboard and then report that back to somebody. They also SMS notification whenever something happens online. And there's an automatic timeout whenever you are in a banking, when you've logged in. And often they will have per session passwords via SMS. And they will give you prominent warnings and safety tips on the website to make sure that you use your banking carefully. So to do safe e-commerce with internet banking, this is a few tips on how to protect yourself on the internet. Do not use public computers for banking because people can trace your actions and then re repeat them and uh, get into your banking site. Make sure you have good passwords. Do not give out your personal details like PIN codes and so on. System software must be updated regularly. That's like your operating system. And do not leave your computer unattended while you are on the banking website. Make sure you protect yourself against phishing. Take note of security warnings on the bank's website. Be alert to cell phone SIM swaps. For online shopping, have the organization's contact information and URL. Look for security guarantees and the return policy. Be aware of terms and conditions. Check payment methods and delivery details. And keep full records of your orders. And be careful for goods from outside of South Africa. You may pay import duties and the exchange rate can be high and only give credit card details, never give your PIN or password. Now, many tasks are being automated in the office. In the mobile office, you can use a laptop, a smartphone, a tablet, and then internet access, and you've got a mobile office. A virtual office is when you have a set of services that you rent, for example, a receptionist, a mailing address, an office space, etc., and it reduces your expenses because you don't actually have a physical office. Outsourcing or decentralized labor is um, when you hire a, you hire a certain amount of labor from a local pool of workers, and you can employ workers from anywhere in the world and this save, saves costs.